Hey everybody, it's me, Jan Hempstad. Today we're gonna to be turning this bathroom into a camera. We're not gonna be putting a camera in the bathroom. Well, there is a camera in this bathroom, the one recording me, but we're not gonna be sticking cameras in bathrooms because that's just weird. But we are gonna turn this bathroom into a camera. And yeah, this is getting strange, so roll the intro. All right, so today we're going to be making a camera obscura. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically a pinhole camera. So we're gonna be turning this bathroom into that. They're kind of like the first camera ever created. If we, I don't know exactly when they're from. Let's just check, let's ask to Google. According to Wikipedia, uh, the original camera obscura probably was made 30,000 BC to 500 BC, somewhere in that time range, you know. So a while ago, been around for a while. But first, we're, before we build that, we're gonna go over some of the basics of optics that help develop what we know today as photography. To go over some of those basic concepts, we're gonna go over to the mirror. So let's head over. We're just gonna go over some of the basic concepts of optics, which is the interaction of light and matter. So first things first, light is a ray. It travels in a straight line unless it's interacting with something else. So we have these things called rays. And one model for modeling rays uh, is called geometric optics or ray optics. So you can mathematically show these straight lines and calculate how they're gonna interact with something. I've heard of ray tracing. Ray tracing is something that's done to render computer-generated objects to imitate light. So ray tracing is actually another thing that's used in the design of optics and, that, and lenses and that sort of thing. Two of the major concepts in there are reflection and refraction. So reflection, you're pretty familiar with if you've ever looked into a mirror. Reflection is when light bounces off a surface or a material. So the angle that the light comes in, also known as the angle of incidence, will always match the angle of the reflected light off of the surface. So those two angles are equal. You can kind of think of this like a pool table. Like if you hit a cue ball against the side of a pool table, it will, in a sense, reflect. And the harder the angle that you're coming at that edge, the harder the angle it will be going out. So the next major way that light interacts with matter is refraction. That's when light passes from one medium, like air, into another, like glass. And those two mediums have a different refractive index, light will bend. Using the index of refraction of the two materials, you can use what's called Snell's Law to calculate the change in angle that will occur to that light ray. So if you want to focus light, you want to refract it in such a way all the rays are focused to a specific distance. So when someone designs a lens, they design the surface of the lens into a shape that is going to focus the light at a specific distance. And that specific distance is called the focal length of the lens. Like a 50 millimeter lens focuses light back 50 millimeters from the center of the lens or the lens set in the case of modern lenses because it'll be a whole set of lenses that will add up to a specific focal length. Before lenses, you can still focus light. So a camera obscura is just a box with a hole in it. So if you want to produce an image with that, you basically just have to have light bouncing off an object and only light rays traveling in a specific direction at specific angles are gonna get through the hole, so you actually get an image with information, essentially, instead of a scattered light noise that's been going, like, everywhere. So to take your camera obscura and make it a camera, you basically have to drop a lens in front of it near the hole. And that can be behind or in front of the hole. Just The lens just has to be the correct focal length 
to focus light onto the back of your box. That's essentially all a camera is. It's a lens, a hole, and a sensor on the back wall. So what we need to do is block off light from getting into the bathroom and then poke up essentially what's a hole so we can only let light coming in at specific angles so as to create an image on the back of the wall. And yeah, we're gonna do that by covering the door in cardboard. So let's go do that. First thing you're gonna need is a bunch of cardboard and a knife or multi-tool. This is gonna block the whole doorway to create our box for our camera obscura. All right, let's uh, tape it up. Okay, let's get a light to see how light tight we are. But I have to say that's fairly dark. All right, so we got the cardboard here set up on the door and we're already kind of getting an image coming. This is just a big kind of gaping three inch hole in the cardboard. So you kind of know what we're looking at here. We got our hole right here. There's the outside world, there's the window kind of blown out. This is all this light's coming through my bedroom window. So let's go ahead and throw, uh, I got a aperture here. Woohoo, shadows. Uh, this one's a little smaller. Obviously this is about a one inch hole. I'm starting to see an image of the outside there. Even smaller aperture, I don't know if we'll be able to see this. This one's about like probably five millimeters across. <laughs> Pretty small, very tiny. It's a whole punch punch. <laughs> However big that is. <laughs> Someone in the comments tell me how big that is. All right, there we have a, actually a fairly sharp image. You can, it's a little dark here. Let me try cranking the ISO a little, a little higher. I'm gonna drop my shutter speed way down so you can actually see. Since it's stationary, the blur won't be so bad. There's the minimum shutter. So blurry. But check out this here. Actually, for a clear image of outside. Pull punch in some construction paper. And a lot of cardboard on the door. All right, let's go throw the lens on here now. This is the lens right here. This is a magnifying lens from a, uh, basically an eyepiece. It was the closest thing that I could get that had the correct diopter. Variable zoom for the viewfinder. So it has different magnification. So it's 1.08 to 1.8 six magnification, which you can actually calculate into diopters, which is 0.4 being the minimum. So roughly just under half a meter to up to three meters. So, which is good for us because the bathroom is 1.5. So it's somewhere in there. So we'll actually be able to adjust it by rotating it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut a circle out and then just gaff tape this to that circle. So. All right, I got my gaff tape. Love that sound. The sound of production. <laughs> and I can go ahead and just tape this over our hole. And that is essentially our lens. Not pretty, but it'll work. <laughs> so here's what our camera looks like on the outside. It's literally just the lens right there. Cut into a cardboard, taped to this door. But, should work out. <laughs> Let's go inside. I've also got my gaff tape here to gaff tape myself inside. Yay. Let's go ahead and crank up down the shutter, or I guess I should, so we can get a little more exposure here and really see that image. There, actually you can see a person walking by. It's a little blurry. But yeah, that's basically an upside down image of my window. I'll go ahead and flip it over. So basically we've made a primitive camera in our bathroom. And some gaff tape and cardboard. Anywho, oh, there goes another person. It's also a great way to spy on your neighbors, but that would also be creepy. Anyway, 
Just got a whole setup out here for projecting Teddy. We have a very bright RE650, basically blaring at Teddy. So bright, yeah, there's Teddy Bear. Those rays are tracing from the bear through the lens over here. So that line from like, say, his eye into there. So that direct light ray is being focused onto that back wall, geometrically being flipped over, of course. But And so we got a nice to portrait of Teddy going on here. Pretty nifty. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. And this is gonna be the first in a series about making my own lens and talking about the basics of photography. If you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell, comment if you have any questions. I know a lot of you are new here, came over from uh, Potato Jet's channel. So thanks for subscribing, appreciate it. Also, if you made it this far in the video, uh, comment potatoes down below. More videos in this series coming down the line. Next time we're gonna be probably working on an iris. And so yeah, get out there and make something awesome. See ya.